Hey everyone, it's Jim and Charles from Melatone Amps. And in today's episode, number five, we're going to talk about the PCBs that we use in uh, all of the classic line um, kit amps. And in a lot of our own development work. Yeah, yeah, we make good use of these boards. Um, and the fact that we've made us a, a dedicated section now in uh, the store and that we've released actually a new a new board so let's just take a quick look at what is currently available so there's a, a standard power supply board that basically just has one B plus out I've got a pointer around here somewhere Charles where the heck did it go oh I think it's over on your right there yeah thank you <laughs> so that power supply is good for things like uh, like a monoblock amplifier um, or for doing a single stage on something, or if you can have the same voltage on both your preamp and your power sections. Yeah, and most of the PCBs in the store um, uh, have a link to a schematic under the information download section. And uh, a lot of these boards, well, all the boards are double-sided, but for the power supply, it's kind of interesting because there's a mirror image to the board so if you need to build, let's say, a dual mono design, you can have an A-side board beside a B-side board. And then you can have a mirror image and um, a symmetrical build. Or you can leave two Bs up, depending on how your build works. This board is an iteration of what was and is our very standard power supply board. And it's got a second stage out on the B+. It also has um, a, a spot for an extra filter stage, a spot for an extra output, and an extra dropping resistor in, in there as well. Yeah. And then we've got uh, uh, preamp boards. So this one here is uh, a 9-pin universal board. And um, we use that with the 6N6P driver stage on the GU50. So we have a gain stage into a cathode follower on it. Right. And up next is a 9-pin cathode follower board. And where do we use that, Charles? Well, we actually haven't used this in a kit yet. The original idea was that we were going to use this uh, in a 9-pin phono classic line, but instead of making a 9-pin phono classic line, we're making a modern line version of that. But this essentially takes uh, has two different sections for the tube and allows each one of them to run as an independent cathode follower for a separate channel. So you could use this as a 9-pin uh, cathode follower board for just about anything. Right. Okay. Now, this is um, the current uh, Phono PCB. It's fairly complex. We had a couple of little um, labeling issues that we missed on this first version which we'll probably fix on subsequent versions. But in order to get a reasonable price from our manufacturer, we have to order a lot of boards in each order. So what you can do here is you can just, as soon as your resistor is on and your polarity um, uh, is oriented for, uh, I think these are um, cathode bypass capacitors. Yep. Just take a little tiny dab of alcohol and all these marks would just come right off the board. Yeah, nothing's mismarked. It's just we missed the polarity on there and we figured out that the R5 is actually better on this side. Yeah, yeah, there's more room. It, it can actually fit on the other side, but I like to have a little space on our resistors. I do not like resistors shoulder to shoulder. Resistor uh, casings can conduct, so it's always good to make sure that they're not physically touching each other. So, and of course this is upside down. <laughs> and as you can see, we mark which side the socket should go on. Anyways, if you uh, always wanted to build your own phono preamp and you don't want to buy a kit, and I get that, that's fine. Um, this board will save you a ton of work, uh, point to point wiring. I, I've built, um, I built two um, uh, custom prototype phono preamps, point to point wiring. And oh my God, it's it's a lot of work, and if you have to do mods, it gets even even uh, grosser. <laughs> so uh, having everything now, this is one circuit, of course. So this is one channel, two gain stages, one EQ stage, all wrapped up, and 
Um, so here's an example of, so this is what goes out uh, with the universal phono uh, kits. And this is the current schematic. And it's designed to really help uh, a builder um, orient themselves so that they can see quite clearly on the actual PCB exactly where everything goes and its interrelationship. So the schematics are really very well drawn. Charles and I take a lot of time making sure we get them right. And actually, the modern line schematics, we've... We've, we've improved even more, yeah. We're yeah. trying to get them more in line with how the actual physical builds go, so there's no confusion, it's as easy as possible, and everything just makes sense. You look at the schematic, you look at the build, and you can see it right away. Yeah, and if you haven't figured it out yet, the modern line is meant to, well, it's meant to expand the kit business even further. Um, our, our dream is to have a small manufacturing facility. And um, and um, and I'd like a nice big leather chair and a big desk to sit behind. Actually, no, that's not. That's I'm just kidding. I actually love being in the lab, um, and I hate sitting down. So <laughs> that doesn't work. The chair would be just for show. Um, but the modern line is designed to help people who are just getting into kit building um, to get them going much quicker, much easier, with fewer you know questions. Our, our goal is to literally make it make them the easiest kits you can possibly buy and build. Yeah, and of course, they're still going to sound great. There's no compromise on that. When we started designing them, we were wondering, can we make them sound as good as the classic line? And I think we've surpassed it in some ways. Yeah, yeah. So... Um, I think we've got one more board to look at yeah, here. Let me oh, get... maybe two. <laughs> so, up next is the Universal 6 or 12 SN7. This is our best-selling preamp by far. Uh, it outsells, in fact, it outsells all the kits, maybe four to one. Mm -hmm. And everyone who builds one of these things and then puts in a, a real high quality 12, 12 SN7. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, an original vintage Tungsol or Sylvania, and we still have a few of them left. <laughs> it's, um, it's amazing how many people will order the kit and then put in their first 12 SN7 tubes. And then the next day we get an order for a whole bunch of <laughs> different vintage. <laughs> oh, yeah, we get an order for six or eight <laughs> tubes. So ca I, I like to tell my friends, caution, this could cost you a lot of money. <laughs> Uh, but the sonics of those early uh, 6SN and 12SN7 tubes is just, it's just there, there'll never be another uh, tube like that. Um, and of course, the vintage ones, um, the 6SN7, the early high demand vintage ones are essentially extinct. We have a few left. And they occasionally trickle in in singles and pairs, occasionally. We have much better inventory of the 12 volt version. And of course, the only difference is you put a, a different switch mode. Anyways, these boards um, have been quite popular. And um, and they're rock solid. We haven't had to revise them in a couple of years now, I think. Yeah, well, we're on version 3, I think. Let me see what the version is. Yeah, yeah. 3.0K. Okay. Yeah, this is version 3.0. And um, they're pretty much perfected. You can see some of the things Charles does in board design. You can see we're trying to get across. This is probably um, the, the the filament supply, is it? What is it? Uh, no, that's one of the plates. Ah. So we've, we're sneaking that through there and we're bringing it over. But you can see Charles does a little jog here. And the, uh, whenever you're moving high voltage around, even if it's DC high voltage, you want to keep it away from the sensitive areas, particularly the input grids. And um, anything that you can do, any little trick uh, uh, in the PCB design. Um, uh, we'll be tweaking traces by, by fractions of a millimeter in some cases, just to get a little bit more space. Yeah. And to be honest with you, we don't, we don't even know if being that fussy makes that much of a difference <laughs> or any difference. But, but it doesn't hurt. But it can be done. Yeah. So we do it, right? Uh, it's worth spending an extra day of reviewing PCB uh, PCB design, and we spend hours and hours. We have a rule of doing three complete entire reviews of each new PCB, uh, looking to see how we can improve it. First, we look for circuit errors, of course, but then we start looking at how can we improve it yeah. from every angle, um, and th the boards just get better and better. And last up, we've got a universal um, octal cathode follower. 
And this is the one that we actually do use in the Phono for our cathode followers. So just like the 9-pin one, it's two channels on one board, separate from each other entirely, except for the tube that is, that is tying them both together. Right. Okay. Well, excellent. So those are all in the store. They're reasonably priced. Um, the, um, there, there's a small amount of, of uh, development cost built into the selling price. Uh, and I mean, we put, I figure we put, uh, to develop a, a kit amp, we put between twenty and $60,000 into each kit. And um, the, uh, the kits, of course, are priced to, to pay us back something for all of the hours that we, we put in and all of the money we invest in developing a kit. Um, so the boards are a hell of a deal um, if you're into going your own way. And we support, we've, since, since we started releasing kits, we've supported yeah. you know, developers um, at home who want to do their own thing. And, um, and this, you know, should, this selection of boards should help you, um, uh, you know. Uh, build most uh, of what you could want. Yeah. yeah, well, and you can do your own circuit. That's the thing. You can, yeah. st you can start with uh, our circuit uh, as a foundation, and then you can do your own thing. If you're, you know, if you're getting more experienced and more adventures, just be very careful to respect the data sheets of the tubes that you're working with. And in many cases, the the circuit topology itself will be uh, will be identical, but for some things you just simply can't plug different tubes in. For example, anything that's got an EQ applied to it. So the phono stage has um, a really uh, dramatic EQ circuit on it that changes uh, the base uh, to treble uh, by a total of uh, 40 dB. 40 dB, which is immense. Um, 6 dB, to give you an example, 60 dB down noise floor is basically the gold standard for nothing. So a shift of 40 dB is enor it's just absolutely enormous. And if you change the actual tube impedance, so if you don't use the 6SL7 or 12SL7 or equivalent, the EQ won't work anymore. I mean, it will work, but it won't give you... Yeah, you'll need to figure it out entirely from scratch, basically. Yeah, so, and frankly, the 6SL7 and 12SL7 tubes sound absolutely amazing in a phono preamp. Mm -hmm. I, I would never even want to try anything else. So there'd be no reason to do that. Yeah, but you could actually even use that board without the EQ on there and just leave the spots blank and have two gain stages yeah. one after the other. Yeah. Well, I don't think we need to teach developers how to play, pl <laughs> yeah. how to play around and mod stuff. Yeah. Well, we try to build flexibility into everything that we design here, if we can, if it makes sense. Uh, so a number of the boards have some jumpers. They have a couple of options, uh, so you can play around with them. Yeah. Anyways, have fun building, everyone. We're going to next time you you see us on this channel, we're going to have the uh, the new modern line uh, preamp. Uh, Kit number one, probably uh, built or a uh, building. Uh, we've named it now. It's going to be called the Rocket. It's going to be named after the the uh, gain Cod Rocket. Yep, <laughs> which is the gain stage tube that we're recommending for it. Uh, the parts for uh, for that kit are all ordered, and in fact, they're being manufactured at uh, two different plants, um, two very high quality. Uh, modern computer control plants that make all of our PCBs. Um, and at the same time, they're actually manufacturing what will be the next uh, modern line kit, which will be the Universal uh, 6 or 12 SL7 Phono uh, preamp. It's coming over from the classic line and it's going to become a modern line. And we talked uh, about this in today's Tube Lab episode. So if you're interested, there's a little bit about what's going on with that. Mm -hmm. And um, and yeah, so we'll see you back soon with uh, some, you know, yeah. some exciting information. All right. Take care, everyone. This is Jim. And Charles. Signing off. Cheers, everyone.